This is Papa Smurf. You're listening to Our Lifestyle, the podcast with ODB and the mayor. Yo, 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 it's ODB. This is Our Lifestyle podcast. We're getting ready to jump into the fresh episode. And we want to thank our title sponsors, which includes Custom Car Show Productions. They have three key events every year. Orange Beach Invasion every March in Orange Beach, Alabama. Scraping the Coast every June in Biloxi. And Bayou Showdown, which is every November in Slidell, Louisiana. We also want to thank Mini Truck Showdown Family, which includes their event, their flagship event, the first weekend in June 2022 in Las Vegas, Mini Truck Showdown. You can go on Facebook or Instagram for more information. They also have Kern County Showdown, which is going to be in Bakersfield, California, the first weekend in February 2022. Thank you so much. Support those that support the scene. And on to the episode. Yo, 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 it's our Lifestyle Podcast episode 277, coming at you guys from sunny Tampa, Florida, and I'm here to tell you, Miggity Mike, the mayor, he is out. He's out like Hollywood Mike Miranda was in the Rad movie. He's out for this week, not for good, not yet, and we're basically getting ready for the trip this week. I'll talk a little bit about it. Episode 277, though want to give a huge shout out to Custom Car Show Productions. They've been with us since the beginning and the Mini Truck Showdown family. You heard just a moment ago, I just want to reinforce that the first weekend in the month of June will be in Las Vegas. We're going to be out there for Mini Truck Showdown. A lot of OGs are going to come out. A lot of cool trucks I'm hearing. A lot of big clubs from California. Cannot wait to descend upon not Hill Valley, but Las Vegas. And want to thank Custom Car Show Productions Again, their next event is Orange Beach Invasion last weekend in the month of March. They have been selling all of their premium spots. You can get with Keg Media. You can also get with Lauren. And next week, we'll have Lauren on to talk about it. And uh, I do want to give a huge shout out to Creative House, uh, which was also known as Aftermath Designs. They have been killing it on the OBI Awards. So... Uh, really, really, really uh, looking forward to Orange Beach Invasion, which again is Orange Beach, Alabama. Check out K R E number eight I V E House on Instagram, and you will see their killer awards. But so for this week, what we're going to do is I'm going to blaze through a few updates, and what we've got is Brooke is on to talk about relaxing on the ranch. And that's great because it's literally the Saturday after LST. So we'll be down in a week from now. We'll be down in Lake Wales. We've been there. I think it's the third annual. She reminded me. Went the last two years and have have had an absolute blast. So she joins us for a few minutes. And then also the big homie Matt Winter from Winter Fab. Uh, I finally get a chance on my side to sit down with him. I've slapped hands many times at shows. Real good dude. Positivity. Uh, kind of just uh, gleaming from his camp over there. So much respect to the homie Matt Winter from Winter Fab. We'll talk to him on this episode. Now, uh, the overview of episode 277 is brought to you by Graphics Mafia. You'll hear Brooke mention Graphics Mafia a little bit later. But Buddy and Ryan at Graphics Mafia, they can take care of you if you're a show If you are just an individual, you want to recreate an old sticker, you need some stickers made, maybe you want to give some shout-outs to your sponsors, get uh, with Graphics Mafia. It's G-R-A-P-H-I-X Mafia.com. They're on Facebook. They're on Instagram. They're, of course, also on TikTok. But hit them up. Let them know that OLP sent you. So last episode, look, it was fantastic sitting down with Shane Andrews. Just a great guy. If you're on your way to Lone Star Throwdown, maybe you've seen this through social media, maybe you're a new listener, or you're a return listener, and you were like, ah, I don't know that name, I kind of like the OGs, the old guys, hey, go back, you will not be disappointed, it's a huge military salute, hence why we named it Military Salute, Shane Andrews, again, that was 276, cannot wait to see his build finished, good dude, a lot of positivity over there as well, check it out, last episode, recap. Brought to you by our family at Lone Star Throat Hound. 
and many of you are descending upon Conroe, Texas. Maybe you're going to hit the extensive metalworks open house. Wherever you're going to be this weekend, have fun, but hopefully you'll be in or around the Conroe, Texas area. If you've never been out, I'm telling you, we say this a lot, but literally, quite possibly, it could be the biggest, baddest truck show in the world. And what I'm talking about is, you know, not like a car, you know, new car show. I'm talking about a true truck show. Many of us have been doing this a long time, whether you're an old school mini trucker, hot rodder, C10 guy, OBS guy, or all of the ladies, of course, you got to make it out to Lone Star Throwdown. If you are at home and you're like, damn, I couldn't make it, totally get it. We can't make it to all of them either. But if you're on Instagram, tap on that hashtag LST2022 and you can tap follow. All right. You can unfollow a hashtag at any time. And the very cool thing here is um, all of those, uh, your, your feed will be curated with uh, a bunch of peppered in LST2022 posts. We're going to be doing a lot. I'm going to be doing a ton of reels, a ton of video. Get on out there. Follow us Instagram, Facebook if you're not already, and follow the hashtag LST2022. Tip of the cap to Lonnie Radar and all the team. And one other shout-out here. If you want to see what goes down behind the scenes, Grinder TV did kind of a mini documentary-style film last year, and it just posted. Radar mentioned it was coming recently. And it posted last Friday on Grinder TV's YouTube page. Please check it out. I've watched it and more on that. So uh, huge, huge shout out to Lone Star Throwdown. All right, general updates. You know, Miggity Mike the Mayor is not here for the normal banter. I don't know what I'm going to do. I know his week was, um, it's always tough for USPS after a holiday. Believe it or not, many of us are out gallivanting around if we have a holiday off. Now, in my job, I have a lot of holidays. I do not have President's Day off. However, I know Mike was super busy. I talked to him, man. He said he's he's not going to get done until the evening. I said, come on, man. Meet me at the dog track. Got some money down on some dogs, dude. Need to borrow a couple. But he was, of course, uh, going to be working uh, pretty late. And I didn't even give him a call later in the week because he was going to gallivant on up after he gets the rental van. Come on up stay with his broski, and then pick me up on Thursday. By the time you're listening to this, I was picked up about 11 or 12 on Thursday morning going into noontime, and uh, we got Scott with us, V6 Scott with the Mazda, and we got, uh, we're got we going to be meeting up with Buddy and Ryan, so Ryan's going to gallivant on over, and we're going to see who can sit in the lawn chair the longest without moving in the van. Uh, it almost reminds me of like the Mutt Cut Mobile. Many of you have seen Dumb and Dumber, the first one. It's a, it's not even a cult classic. It's classic. And, you know, the dogs are all kind of, you know, skating around back there. And that's what Ryan and Scott are going to be doing. And hopefully they can hang on during the gas break dip soda challenge that we're going to be doing. We're going to try to do it at the first Bucky's that we go to. We will try to go live. So make sure you got post notifications turned on for us on Instagram. We'll try to go live. We'll try to capture it. And uh, we'll try to explain what the gas break dip is. <laughs> but again, I was hustling as well, kind of working a half day on Thursday so we could peel out of town. You know, I'll be uh, kind of working a little bit from the road and then all Friday, Saturday. If you're going to be at LST, we are going to peel out. We're going to basically pack up Saturday evening. That's our routine, unfortunately. And then we get sideways out of Conroe early Sunday morning. Of course, we're an hour behind there with Central Time. We're going to make our truck back to Florida. By the time Mike meets up um, or drops me off here in the uh, Tampa, just north of Tampa area, then he still has another three and a half, four hour drive, whatever it is, down. So he gets home pretty, pretty late, and then he's up Monday for work or whatever he's got to do. So, you know, it's not easy doing this stuff, but we love it. Uh, because I took Monday off, it's been a while since I went to a show and took a four day. I used to do it a lot, but kind of built my time up at work and. Hopefully on Monday, I'll get a chance to go to Bush Gardens. It'll be the last day for the uh, pass holder preview for Guazi, Iron Guazi. So looking forward to that. I'll talk about it next week. But the general updates, my friends, my family out there, all the listeners brought to you by Southeast Mini Trucking Nationals, also known simply as Mini Nats, Maggie Valley, North Carolina, I talk about Lone Star Throwdown being the biggest, baddest truck show in the world. 
arguably Mini Nats is the biggest, baddest mini truck show in the world, in the galaxy rather, and uh, it's going down. Mini Nats, we hope to see you out there. That, believe it or not, is going to be one of the few shows that we vend at this year. Uh, we are going to have a VIP party, so uh, that's uh, we'll talk about that next week. The badges are being pressed now so much thanks to Asphalt Army. Thanks to Jason Bell and team at Mini Nats for allowing us to do it. But, you know, we've got the Hammered Weekend Wear crew. Sean Rose, hopefully, will be on next week as well to talk about some updates. And uh, we have Asphalt Army, Malloy's Barbecue, and uh, DJ Mays will all join us for the VIP party. It's going down, 90s vibe. And uh, we hope to see you there at Mini Nats, which is going to be, again, late April 22nd through the 24th of. April. So, we'll see you out there. All right, trivia with Mike. Dude, we can't. I'm going to play the song anyways. Okay, players. Now it's time to get serious. All right, players. Here's the thing. This is a cliffhanger. We got to wait till next week. I don't think Mike's going to get this one, but I had to play the music. I love that music. It brings me back to the good old days. I was lucky enough as a child um, you know, we didn't have a lot, but my dad, as I mentioned, got cable. And once he got cable, man, it was on and popping. G.I. Joe, I was watching it. I was watching some Pressure Luck, which I heard is back on. And, dude, I tell you what, I love some game shows. And uh, Pressure Luck is, is classic, dude. Uh, <laughs> the Game Show Network now, which I don't think I have, they have a documentary-style deal that talks about the person that figured out the whammy pattern the dots he had the VA, uh, VHS player recording and then pausing it like a freaking animal in the early to mid 80s and he figured out the pattern this is the kind of stuff Hank does on a Friday night figuring out the patterns of the ladies at the bars you know what I mean but seriously <laughs> I gotta play the music and I played it and hopefully you guys love it but Biggity Mike the mayor he'll be back next week now he's on a hot streak so he's got his chest all poked out but Mike we're going to stop you in your tracks next week. Trivia with Mike brought to you by All Time Low Magazine. If you haven't heard, there is a magazine geared to us kinfolk in the mini truck scene, and that is All Time Low Magazine. Visit atlmagazine.com. You can buy individual issues. You do have subscriptions as well, T-shirts, calendars, hats, zip-ups, all kinds of cool stuff, ATL magazine.com make sure you cop the new issue individual issues are uh twenty dollars right but it's a premium brand magazine and i tell you you could actually buy uh it looks like issue 27 is available which was hot 28 and then of course 29 is the new one difficult times chad luke so uh go check it out all right the scene updates okay my favorite part of the podcast there's so much good stuff that goes on out there and one of the reasons why we started this podcast is to highlight that positivity because we know there's some negativity in every kind of scene and things like that. And, of course, we want to stomp out that negativity as much as we can. So I'll go through a couple of things. Uh, one of them, I do want to talk to Sean Rose soon from Rose Metal Works. Uh, he posted back in uh, mid-February our first ever um, Mittler Brothers machine ordered through Rose Metal Works has arrived. So... Uh, big ups, dude is is always giving props to those that have been with them since day one. Like Greg Miller, rest in peace, and uh, love to see the continued success. Can't wait to link up soon. Uh, this is um this kind of goes under the podcast updates, but I'm going to mention it. Chris Bertrand just listened to OLP podcast with Shane Andrews. Got to say, brother, much much respect to you, sir. Keep doing what you're doing, bud. Such an awesome build. Got a lot of traction on that one, and thanks so much, Chris, for listening and taking the time just to get out there and spread the word and tag us and give uh, a homie uh, just a good word, man. That It means the world to me, man, so I really appreciate you doing that. Uh, Jeff Kissick, all right? Uh, this is cool. I, I got to link up with Jeff. He's a big supporter of the podcast. He chimes in a lot of posts. He posted on February 17th just some of the collection came, uh, all the different awards that he's got, Team Haro stickers in the back. Vision Streetwear on the quarter pipe. Dude, I was like, wow. 
some pretty cool stuff tied into the B, uh, BMX freestyle stuff. So uh, big ups to the homie. Can't wait. I, I definitely, he doesn't know this. He's on the list now, and I can't wait to link up. This was pretty cool. Joe Hernandez, uh, he says, well, no LST for me, but I've been working on some surprises during downtime. Big thanks to Brad Fanshawe and Bond Speed Wheels. Dude, super cool Audi, and uh, it's a wagon. And these wagons are on the rise. I know Brandon Burrell's got a super cool wagon. Uh, you know, Brandon, I think, is even selling one of his his cars. And I've always been a fan of wagons. I remember the Honda Accord wagons. And uh, we've got some stuff in store in the future uh, related to that topic. But stay on the rise, brothers. Sean Case says, my new toy. Man, she's pretty. So I'm excited. Very cool S10. I've been a big fan of this S10 since I first saw it. And uh, you just got to go out there. It's Sean, S-E-A-N, Case, just how it sounds. And uh, go check it out. It's the green truck. I don't know how to describe it. It's got the smoothie wheels, big engine, and it is just badass. To use Travis Novak's word, it's just bitching. So check them out. It's really, really cool. Now, I tend to forget uh, anything that I save on Instagram. I know there's uh, one guy I want to give a shout-out to, Robert Balcom, B-A-L-C-O-M. I forget if I shouted him out recently, but dude uh, is a hardcore trucker. He collects uh, first issues of magazines. He's got a great collection. Uh, I recently posted and tagged him some of his uh, mini trucking magazines and just kind of love how he has them all in that kind of storefront atmosphere. So give the homie, uh, uh, check him out. You know, we tagged him recently on Instagram as well. Now, this is funny. Mike recently asked me, I think it was on last episode, what cartoons I listened to as a kid, and I wasn't expecting that question. Of course, G.I. Joe was the big one. Looney Tunes was the other. But um, there's a, a social media account called Neon Talk, and they have a lot of followers. They post what they claim is 80 aesthetics, but it's all kinds of stuff, you know, a lot of cool, just rad stuff, you know. And um, they posted something the other day, and I always forget the name of this cartoon. It was so weird, but I watched it as a kid. It was called Turbo Team, and they posted a video of uh, from 1984, <laughs> and it was a kid that turned into a car. Does anybody remember that? Okay, uh, I'm going to get a uh, maybe myself or Dizzy, Don Dizzy Davis. We got to get a, a, a discussion going in the Airhead Nation Facebook group, Turbo Teen, it must have only been on for a season. I mean, it was the weirdest. I loved it as a kid, you know, six, you know, five, six, seven years old. But <laughs> the guy, they have the video on here. The kid gets down on all fours and he turns into a car. So very bizarre, but that was one. And I'm going to out myself and say, there you go. Uh, next, Jazzy Green 1, J-A-Z-Z-Y. We've had her on. Jasmine Green, just an amazing female down under, and uh, she got some cool hardware car show or show cars Melbourne. She tagged, and I tell you what, we got to get her back on. Her truck is truly just out of this world. You know, I don't want to keep using the word epic, right? Because I think that's overused. So I had to pause there for a second. But I'm telling you what, from her. Stitching on this truck and doing so much. I mean, you got to go back and listen to that episode again. It's really cool. Uh, tip of the cap to Jasmine. All right, this dude we got to have on. This quite possibly might be the craziest. Follow me for a second. The craziest, baddest, most insane. Possibly not everybody's style, though. Okay, I get it. Mini truck of all time. Instagram, L U V. Like love, like Chevy love, Zilla, Z-I-L-L-A, 7-4, okay? Final touches before she loads for LST. Dude, got to get this guy on insanity, the metal work that's going into this. I know there's the other S10 that we've seen at Mini Nats. That's an insane one too, but I'm telling you what, just take a peek, okay? Take a peek at Love Zilla. Totally insane. I think he's from California because he's got a California plate on it. Tip of the cap to the big homie. I think those were the key things I wanted to share. Some from Facebook, some from Instagram. Uh, there's a lot of stuff we're going to get into this year. You know, Cruise to the Pines. I want to get up with the homies. Been kind of chatting with them to talk about that later in the year. 
and uh, want to highlight some other magazines that are in our scene. A couple, you know, ones overseas, ones in California. There's a lot that we have in store, but that's all the time that we have for the scene updates this week. And the scene updates is brought to you by Garage Gear Clothing. If you're at Lone Star Throwdown, go by the Garage Gear Clothing booth. Let them know that our lifestyle podcast sent you, and get up with them if you can. Also, free shipping, garagegearclothing.com. You name it, free shipping, not often seen in our scene. Give them some love, garagegearclothing.com. All right, key show updates. We're going to roll in now to the audio with Brooke from Relaxed Atmosphere, Florida. Hey, so as I mentioned, we're going to transition in here to the, the show updates, and you guys get sick of hearing from me. So we got Brooke back on. I know you're fresh off the Custom Scene podcast as well, but Brooke, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you, Jason? Good. It's always good to hear from you. We love, we've established in the past that relaxing uh, or relaxed atmosphere in Florida, you know, over the years they've had several shows and we thoroughly have a good time at relaxing on the ranch, but it's coming up just in a week from now, you know, many of the first day listeners that are on their way to Lone Star Throwdown and we're going to turn around next week and have a throwdown at relaxing on the ranch. How excited are you guys to throw the show again? Man, we are so excited. This is our third year at the venue at Westgate River Ranch, and we are very much looking forward to it. I uh, cannot wait, uh, but it is coming up fast. Yeah, and you know, we would remind folks on Facebook and Instagram, it's it's this simple. It's just relaxing, uh, you know, relaxing, and then another IN, or excuse me, relaxing on the ranch. And, um, you know, there's links in the bio there. To kind of jump into the aspect of where we are now, the pre-registration, I understand, is closed, but people can still show up day of and pay to to enter the show, right? That is correct. Um, day of registration is $40, um, and we are going to start it at 8 a.m. on um, Saturday morning. And uh, um, yeah, as you said, pre-registration is done. <laughs> Yeah, and I get confused with the dates because this year's not a leap year, but it's March 5th, right? Yep, March 5th. So basically, we're looking at March 5th, uh, that Saturday, they can arrive, you know, kind of in the morning time, and they'll kick it off. I I know for us in Tampa, it's a nice, easy drive over there. You know, I get up, usually last couple years, I get up really early and cruise on over there. Then when I get to the Westgate... You go down that little road there, and then boom, you have the team set set up, you know, directing folks where to go. Yes, and it'll be the same layout as before. Um, we do have a designated spot for trailer parking. You ha- actually have to pass through the show field, but there is a place for you to park your truck and trailer. There is plenty of room out there. Um, the show will be set up the same. There will be a grassy area for some vehicles to park, but... In my opinion, the coolest place to be is under the oak trees lining the main drive. It's just uh, cool photo opportunities. Really, really pretty venue. Yeah, 100%. And what was cool is Elvis, uh, one of our good friend of ours, you know, he won the award for the, I think it was like maybe the best of, you know, one of those awesome awards. And his his truck was on the artwork in the past. I remember he was under some of those oak trees. Uh, this year, you guys took a little bit different approach, right? You got a lifted truck and you got Danler's car on it. Um, How can people pick up one of the event shirts? We will be selling event shirts at the show, and check this out. We've got purple. Nobody has purple show show shirts. I am so excited about that. So we've got black, gray, and we've got purple, and the purple is dope. Hells yeah, I like it. Now, what was unique, and I want the listeners to know this, is before the pre-registration closed, when you would click the link in the bio on Instagram for Relax It on the Ranch, Keep me honest, you guys did offer packages where like you could have pre-registered and then secured your shirt, which is kind of a unique thing. We don't see that with a lot of shows because, you know, it takes a little bit of work to be able to to sort all that stuff out. Yes. Um, and, you know, we're a smaller show. We're not like the big promoters. We try to not have excess inventory. <laughs> so, sure. yeah, we, we try to try to meet the demand. And, yeah, to secure a shirt, definitely when you pre-reg, uh, pre-register, you can order the shirt. We make sure that we have it this year. Uh, we did order more shirts to have on hand, but we sell out every year. 
Um, so we're hoping we didn't over order, but yeah, we're hoping to be able to keep up with it this year. Yeah, no doubt. And it had to have been tough to pick the vehicles. You know, 2021 was awesome with uh, the the van on it, uh, the step van. And then, you know, this year, as I mentioned, the lifted and then Dandler's car, which I think is pretty cool. The venue itself, to me, offers something unique because, like you said, you've got a great place to park, but it's a stone's throw to walk over to kind of, I don't want to call it a saloon, but it's a it's a nice little place you can you can go, you know, use the restroom, get a cold drink and things like that. Uh, that's one of those unique aspects aspects that I believe kind of just adds to the ambiance of that of this awesome place. Oh yeah, and you can call it a saloon. It is. Yeah, there um, you go. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Westgate River Ranch, for those that don't know, is a working dude ranch. They do have their entire little western town theme set up with um, an old post office, and general store, and there is a saloon. Um, after the show, they have a rodeo on Saturday night, so that's another thing that you could bring your family to. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And in years past. You know, we've seen some different things, right, from the the different raffles and things like that. Do you guys, I mean, I, sometimes I'm happy not to see a raffle because that means we're not having to, you know, there, there's no one in, in, in an excessive deed, right? Um, do you guys anticipate doing any of that kind of stuff this year or it's not needed? No, um, we're, as, as far as I know, we're not doing a raffle this year. Okay, yeah, and that's not necessarily a bad thing because... As I said, you know, it's been a tough couple years. I know last year you guys really did a lot to help Vic Figueroa, a severed Florida member. So, you know, we appreciate um, all the stuff that the Relaxed RA chapter does, not only to throw the show, but also to kind of help, you know, those in our truck community. Absolutely. You know, and the people in the past that we've helped have been people that we know in the scene and people that just really need a helping hand. And, um, you know, Vic, yes, there's been some others um, in the scene. Um, they know who they are. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're, we're happy to help when we when there's a need. And that's what is so great about the scene is we do come together as a scene and help each other out. And uh, I, I really like that aspect of this community. Yeah, 100%. The other aspect that I loved last year, and I would encourage people, if you're in Orlando, you know, the Decorvers come from the Panhandle. They come from far and wide. Miami, they come north. You know, come on out to relax it on the ranch. Again, next weekend, it's technically March. Um, it's the first weekend in March, and um, it's the first Saturday, I should say, at River Ranch Saloon there. And one of the things I really loved is, like, Sabre was there. You had all the main clubs from Florida, but you had everybody just mingling. You have plenty of space there to hang out, and I think that's what's continued to be needed in our scene, right? Not everyone maybe gets uh, gets together and, and maybe aligns on the same ideas, or maybe we all don't um, you know, slap hands at every show, but I do appreciate the camaraderie that we have at your venue because it allows for that you know, kind of tight-knit truck community. Yes, I agree. And, you know, I harp on this, but this is a show that you, you can bring your family to. And we see that out there. Like, you know, you bring you bring the wife and kids or you bring the husband and kids and everybody has a good time. You know, when the kids reach their limit and they just can't handle the car show anymore, there's stuff for them to do. So that's a unique aspect of this show. And we do see people bringing their families out. And I'm really happy to see that. Yeah, definitely. The one of the most underrated things, and I've I hate to say I've only experienced a little bit of it because, you know, I get up early typically and drive over. The show was awesome, but the the night atmosphere is even better. I'm planning to stay this year, and when folks either stay, they can get you know for those that don't know, you can get a, a hotel room on the premises and things like that. But you've got the camping aspect. You also have the RVers, right? And I know when the sun goes down and you get over to some of those camps and everybody's kicking back a cold one and hanging out. Uh, I know like John Lopez and some of those guys, you know, and Mike, you know, cooking hot dogs and all this stuff. That's to me like really when it sets in that, hey, we had a great show today, but tonight's going to be a blast. Oh, yeah. They cook better than hot dogs. I, I wandered over <laughs> to their camp and they fed me, uh, I think it was a paella. But Ooh. if you don't know this, Aftermath feeds me at the uh, Campfire <laughs> Shenanigans. Campfire shenanigans, um, relaxing on the ranch. Like they, they always have snacks. They always have snacks. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. 
Uh, yeah, but yeah, I wandered over where uh, John Lopez, Kim Lopez, Mike Murray, like they, um, they yeah. definitely had some food set up over there. Yeah. Now, I don't want to talk about any of the negative aspect of the show. I would just tell people we've talked about it with David DeCorver, you know, his tent. If that tent's a rock, and I mean, we saw it. I think the tent was in the back of his truck. And, and Brooke, I thought that the dually was hitting three-wheel. And I'm not talking about, you know, Sweet Ellie, you know, his awesome customized. Man, their, <laughs> their tow pig was, I thought it was hitting three-wheel. Maybe I was wrong. You know what I mean? That poor that poor daily driver of theirs is so abused. <laughs> Yeah, from LST, and then the next weekend it was hitting three wheel motion at relaxing on the uh, on the ranch. I was thinking to myself, oh. dude, man, they've got to let off a little bit. You know, whatever, whatever's going on there. I know there's supposedly some camping going on. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the camping. So yes, um, you were mentioning the different things you can do out there. You can tent camp. Uh, the facility actually has this um, thing where they'll set up tents for you. So all you have to do is show up in the tent set up they also have teepees uh you can glamp and they have those contessa wagons so they're the old western style wagons and they have packages for that too none of which are things i can do but um you know in the past i've camped this is the first year i'm staying in a hotel um it was really windy my husband and i were trying to pack up the tent last year uh, sunday morning in a windstorm and i wish we had like a time lapse camera recording us trying to to pack away our tent because the wind was not cooperating we were it it was a struggle so uh this year we're not camping we're staying in a hotel at the ranch but yeah there's there's uh hotels and cottages um all kinds of accommodations there so whatever your style is they can accommodate you if you don't cook at camp there's um, a general store that has like sandwiches and ice cream actually really good ice cream and then they have a restaurant. So you will be taken care of out there. Yeah, very cool. You know, RA Relaxed Atmosphere celebrated their 30th anniversary last year. And what's been interesting to me is to continue to see the support that that club puts on for different shows. You know, we're talking about Relaxing on the Ranch, which is the first Saturday in March. But then you fast forward in May, you've got Relaxing on the Park St. Louis, you know, twenty the 20th through the 22nd. And then you have other venues. I know the... Um, the Oregon show it looks like it's going to be canceled for this year, but you know RA has that rich history of putting on events from RA, you know, kind of in SoCal and things like that, all the way down to uh, the East Coast, right in Florida, and that just has to be a good camaraderie thing for you guys in your chapter, right? Oh yeah, you know, and uh, if we're talking about RA shows, you cannot forget All Star events. Yeah, there that you go. was. Oh man, that was the best show. Um, you know, that went on for 12 years, I think, and had a run. But yes, um, we are a close-knit club. We support each other. Um, and it, it is nice to travel out of state and you just feel like you're one of the group. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, and I tell you, you know, you guys always show us a lot of love. And, and I appreciate, you know, the chapter that you guys have. And, you know, the the Kate Simpsons and Mike and, and just going to all these different shows. And, you know, and Barbaglia and, and Ron and everyone – Ironically, Ron from Hammered Weekend Wear, he was there last year vending, and he said he just had a blast. I'm glad he did. We were so excited to see him. And um, uh, you, you were saying, Jason, you have to you have to talk about Dominic, too, because he's yes. been coming out to all the shows, and that's awesome. Yeah, and he's kind of being brought up through the scene, and he, you know, he's, he's a great kid, so diggity dom, he's the man. But, you know, last year we had to really tell Hank, Hammer and Hank from Hammered Weekend Wear, we had to tell him not to kick the saloon doors in because that's usually what he does on a Friday night. And we kind of said, hey, you know, this is you guys' chapter. You know, let's not do any damage here at the facility. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, he would have to compete with Fester. Fester was there. Uh- <laughs> oh, boy. You said the F word. Oh, <laughs> nah, he's oh big, yeah. He's the big homie. I was messaging him the other day talking about trucks. and But, you know, going back to relaxing on the ranch, you know, we're excited about it again you kind of said it. It has that small hometown feel, but uh, it's it's really, believe it or not, in a central spot. You know, it's not in Tampa. It's not in Miami. It's in uh, technically Lake Wales, I think, right? But if you look at it yes. on Google Maps and you pull up uh, the facility there, uh, it's really not that bad of a drive, no matter where you live, unless you're the, the Corvers. I mean, but I mean, they're in Niceville or some shit, right? I mean, that's way up there. <laughs> they're they're not near anything. <laughs> <laughs> they're just in the middle of uh, the panhandle. Like, yeah, they're oh, yeah. 
they have to put a lot of miles on that daily driver to get anywhere. Yeah. See, that goes back to the abuse that it's taken. So, but um, now I know there's probably a long list of people or a long list of vendors or sponsors, right? But you know, in the short time that we have, was there any few that you wanted to really call out that maybe you felt kind of go above and beyond that you guys needed to mention? Well, this week especially, I um I, I had some last minute things I wanted to take care of, and uh, Buddy Richardson from Graphics Mafia has come through for me, um, helping me knock out some last minute stuff. And same with Pinstripe and Mikey. Um, I do I, I love doing a Kids Choice Award every year, and I can't wait to see what Mikey does with it. I got a hand cut metal sign, and Mikey's doing the artwork on that, um, and he's also doing some last minute work on. Um, a toolbox that I picked up at, of all places, Tractor Supply. But I uh, saw that on clearance. I'm like, oh, my God, that would be great for Best Under Construction. So Mikey's got that. So thank you, Mikey. Thank you, Graphics Mafia, Ryan, Buddy. For I, I really appreciate you helping me knock out last-minute stuff. Um, and then, of course, ProFab um, has helped out over the years, and so has um, uh, Daniel. Smith. Smith works. Yes, Smith works. Yes. Oh my God, he's so talented and he he's helped us since year one. So Good. there's some people that help us get it together. But for you know, two weeks before our show, thank you so much, Mikey and Buddy Richardson, for helping me uh get some last minute things ironed out. I appreciate it tremendously. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's that's great. That you know, a lot of great people come together. Uh what I appreciate too is if you go on Google and type in relaxing on the ranch twenty twenty two, right? All separate. You're going to see everything from Car Cruise Finder, uh, StayHappening.com, you know, Instagram, even local AARP.org. You know, this event is really on all these main platforms and sites to go. Hey, come on out, check it out, and um, you'll see. Uh, to Brooks' point earlier, 3200 River Ranch Boulevard, River Ranch, uh, Florida. It really, if you just go on Google Maps, many of us use that or Waze. Type in the river ranch and uh it's gonna pull up right but um you know as we kind of wind it down i mean i'm so excited for next weekend two back-to-back weekends uh of course we saw you at lone star throwdown last year too and we had a blast out there yes oh um i i didn't want to interrupt but i forgot to mention um graphic disorder who does our artwork and our yes. t-shirts every year and just top-notch quality uh just thank I, I forgot to thank them and i shouldn't have forgotten th- them but they're awesome as well um yeah. yeah lst can't make it out this year um have to oh god i have wow. today starts my lst vacation but i cannot make it we're doing a staycation my husband's Daily Driver, it's a 2015 Silverado. It's got the uh, direct on-demand fuel. It dropped a lifter, and uh, it's been very expensive. We're trying to get his Daily Driver back together, and I uh, just can't make LST this year. We're going to try to work on that. So no LST. I'm bummed about it. I have to adult. Yeah. It just it happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah, well, believe me, we're going to be doing a lot of that this year because we're – you know, trying to balance, right? It's that B word that, that we all need. But, yeah, I know Lauren's had some hiccups with the truck, so hopefully he can get that, you know, kind of, you guys can uh, get that squared away. I know that you've had a lot going on with the house as well, and we're now into that same stuff. So I want to thank you for posting some of the photos that you guys did because I sent them to my wife, and I was like, hey, this is pretty cool. So, you know, you, <laughs> you guys have done some neat stuff, and it's I always enjoyed seeing your posts. Oh, thanks. Yeah, we bought this uh, repossessed house that was stuck <laughs> in the 80s, and uh, it's it's been one room at a time, and uh, oh my god, any any real homeowner can tell you, like, it doesn't happen like it does on that uh, show, you know, home improvement show. It, do- it doesn't happen like that. Wait, <laughs> so you, you mean, do what you uh, can with what you got. You mean they don't, they, they don't just, like, finish it in a day or whatever? <laughs> oh my god, and the, like, where do they come up with these prices on these shows? Yeah. Like, it's that's only oh, it's going to be twelve thousand dollars. Yeah, it's going to be twelve thousand dollars to paint the inside. Like, no. <laughs> yeah. Where Where did that come from? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. Yeah. Those are Those are fun shows. Yep. Well, it's that balance, right? We're all hitting that age where we're like mini trucks, twenty four seven. Well, I do need to have a house that's livable and that you know we can uh, enjoy, enjoy a little bit, right? Because we all spend a lot of time at home, so. Uh, that's for sure. But uh, Relaxed Atmosphere Florida, you, you could check the hashtag uh, Relaxed Atmosphere to see all their amazing rides. But, uh, you know, a lot of times we'll do uh, short for relaxing on 
the ranch. So, you know, we'll abbreviate that and then we'll also do the relax it on the ranch hashtag. And we're looking forward to it again, just one weekend. If you're a day one listener uh, or day two, this Friday, Saturday, it's going to be a week from now. So when we come back from LST, we're going to gallivant on over uh, Brooke into all of RA Florida. We appreciate you folks and uh, anything else you got. Uh, yes. Arrive Friday night, uh, John Turner, uh, um, you ain't low. He does the, the, cheeseburger well trucks and cheeseburger cookout every year he will cook for your, everybody um friday night so if you get there friday set up your tent come enjoy a hamburger um come get to know everybody come chat with us we'll feed you we would love to see you out there we're looking forward to it as well relaxing on the ranch is on the rise and uh, appreciate you guys thank you so much thank you jason look forward to you djing hells yeah and the ones and twos you know how i do <laughs> <laughs> peace Yo, Brooke, man, it is so much fun linking up with Brooke. She's passionate about the scene. She's got to kill her truck, which we didn't even get a chance to talk about. But we had to kind of keep it, uh, had to keep myself on a leash there, right? Because, you know, time, just trying to get it all packed in this week. But that is is kind of nice because that's literally next weekend, right? So we're going to be at Relaxing on the Ranch. Uh, from there, uh, Orange Beach Invasion is, again, a couple weeks after that. So that's going to be the last weekend in the month of March and uh, orange beach invasion show and orange beach invasion, both official Instagram pages. And then of course, Facebook as well. We'll talk to Lauren hopefully next week and get a few more updates there. Now from relaxing, I got to always remember the big homie family sparks in the park. Okay. So sparks in the park is the Florida show. And that is, this year it's the first through the third. It's the fourth annual car, truck, and bike show. The hottest show on the Emerald Coast. And it is, believe it or not, at the Mullet Festival Grounds, Niceville, Florida. So we are going to be there. We're in talks with David and Kim on what our award will be. And uh, we will be out there. So OLP will gallivant on out. Sparks in the Park, 850 on Instagram. Sparks in the Park on Facebook. It's a fun show. It's a family atmosphere. There's plenty of shade. There's plenty of cool places to go. Uh, Little parks around there if you want to get away a little bit. And, uh, of course, it's near a base, uh, Air Force Base, so there's a lot to do. We'll talk to David and Kim here in the coming weeks. Uh, Mini Nats we talked about uh, will be basically um, about a month from there, three, four weeks out. And lastly, I want to talk about Relaxing in the Park, St. Louis. So Relaxing in the Park, St. Louis, that's going down, and that's going to be the 20th through the 22nd, and it's in Missouri. So Mike and I are actually planning to fly up. You know, Jay and all of the RA kinfolk, they show us so much love. And uh, DJ Mays and, and, and kinfolk, they, they're just good people, right? The pre-registration is open, and uh, car, bikes, and trucks Come on out. It is now in um, Festus, F-E-S-T-U-S, like Festivus for the rest of us. But it is in Festus, and it's going to be great. We'll talk to DJ Mays. I tried to link up with him this week, but with him trying to get on the road and us getting on the road, it just wasn't in the cards. Might do some audio with him at LST. We shall see. All right. As I close out the the scene, or excuse me, the key show updates, I want to thank Tim Gilbert from Negative Camber, Florida. He did let us know. He let me know. The updates were not refreshing to the official OLP show calendar. right? So I cut, I covered a few shows, but nearly not all of them. Uh, if you go to ourlifestylepodcast.com, on the left side, under the drop-down kind of fly-out menu, you're going to see where it says cart, about, listen, and then official OLP show calendar. If you go to the show calendar and you click where it says click here, that will pop up and ask if you want to subscribe to our calendar. Now, you can also click the Instagram link in our bio. And when you do that, uh, if you scroll down, there's a couple of different selections available. And towards the bottom, you're going to see where it says OLP digital show calendar, right? You just tap there and then you click here and then boom, it'll ask, do you want to subscribe? What I've basically done is I've went through as many shows as I can find, okay? 
and I've added those to the calendar, right? Takes time, but that's one way we can give back. And it makes it easy for you to see all of the shows in one place. Now, if you've got an iPhone or Android, it doesn't matter. You can also filter your calendar. So like, let's say when I go in, if I'm like, ah, you know, I'm trying to plan a vacation and I don't really care about the shows, just unselect our calendar. Boom. Now it's hidden. I do that all the time, depending on what I'm trying to plan for work or personal. Boom, it's that easy. Our lifestylepodcast.com. The Key Show Updates is brought to you by the West Coast Influence. Go to minitruckfilm.com. You can purchase the West Coast Influence. You can also uh, link up. They've got a little bit of merch left. They do have custom die cast available. It's minitruckfilm.com, and it's Blu-ray or DVD. Let them know that our Lifestyle Podcast sent you. All right, uh, Joey at Get Decked, I want to thank him as we go into the OLP updates, right, the podcast updates. Uh, He came through big for us, so he's going to be doing our awards for this year for the different shows. Uh, Welch did our best of awards for last year, so thank you to Welch. Joey, on the other hand, does skate decks, and he can take a photo or your artwork and put it on a skate deck, okay? Okay. I'm sworn to secrecy, but he is delivering a ton of skate decks to Lone Star Throwdown. So thanks so much to Joey for getting it done and for what he's doing for the scene. I could tell you a lot of shows are getting on board with this, and it's fantastic because many of us of our age, we want to display this cool shit. Get decked on Facebook or Instagram. You'll see Joey Dilworth's name pop up. So as I say that, last week we hinted at our new pre-sale, and the good news is if you're listening to this on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, it doesn't matter, you can still get in, okay? We've got people telling us this is the best one yet, and it's hard to keep topping what we do, but it's one of the things we love to try to do. Thanks to Graphic Disorder, our new OLP OBS Real American Hero shirt is available, all right? Last year at Lone Star Throwdown, we saw Manuel's OBS truck with the blue interior, the white exterior, and I immediately knew, although we have five or ten in my head right now of what shirts we're going to do, we had to make this one happen. Now, it will not be available at Lone Star Throwdown, but it's available for pre-sale. Shirts, banners, tank tops, zip-ups, hoodies, and stickers, including our new OLP. It's technically, I think, our 4.0 logo, which is a spinoff of G.I. Joe. We've seen others kind of do a similar logo, but we took it to the next level, and we commissioned this artwork to resemble the G.I. Joe packaging that so many of us remember growing up. Now, here's a fun fact for you that you may not know. Back in April of 2020, Hector Garrido, I believe is how you say it, he passed away and he did the box artwork for G.I. Joe's for I pretty much everything. He did the card artwork for the package of the you know the actual Joe. And then he did, you know, the hovercraft and you know all those different ones with that kind of sunburst blast. And that's what I wanted to capture. So we not only did the front that ties into that famous logo, but we also tied into the back. Oh, by the way, Hasbro is celebrating the 40th anniversary of the G.I. Joes that many of us know and love this year. So we're super excited to kind of bring it all together. And again, it's a nod to him. He passed away, I think he was in his 90s, if I remember correctly. And uh, that was April 2020 when he passed. But I say all that our lifestylepodcast.com please get out there pre-order something if you order a banner a shirt a hoodie a tank you get a free sticker included that's going to be the new OLP front of the shirt right that's our 4.0 logo uh, there's also additional stickers available just the OBS the uh, rear artwork of the shirt you name it get on out there our lifestylepodcast.com All right, last but not least, the Airhead Nation updates, and here's what we got for you. A couple of good ones. Junior Cook with Kalina Cook. So we did it. We it, we kept it a secret for the most part. We got married on 2-22 of 2022. Tip of the cap, the bearded man. Always love seeing him slapping hands. Good dude right there. 
Here's another one for you. Shalina Stevens, she is now engaged to crazy Dougie Heck. Okay, Dougie is a crazy man. I love hanging out with him. And uh, congratulations to both of you. I mean that with all due respect to you. We always had fun every time we're at a show, including up there in the Northwest. So uh, big ups. This one's with heavy hearts. I didn't get a chance to cover it last week. But when we had Chad Luke on, he mentioned uh, a guy, Ronnie, that was going through a lot. And unfortunately, I think it was the day after we recorded or maybe the day after we posted it, Ronnie passed away. Uh, My understanding was Negative Camber Florida, or excuse me, Negative Camber member. And I believe he had ties to Vintage Air. Dragon Peace, dude. Um, much love and respect. And, uh, you know, to your loved ones, including your family, uh, you know, we wish you, um, you know, we send our condolences during this very, very tough time. Scott Lawson uh, says, thanks for all the, the born day wishes. He had a great day. And, uh, you know, he's got a, a great photo there with Ashley and the kids. Uh, Scott's got a cool YouTube channel. Go check it out. And, you uh, you know, wish wish him happy birthday there. And last but not least, Eric Fulber. I can't wait to link up with him. He's on our list too, but he says 40 hasn't been uh, too bad so far. Granted, I'm only one day in. So happy born day, Eric Fulber. I know he's helping out one of our big homies here in Florida with a big build and uh, his team. They're killing it from my understanding, and they're just great people, including Eric. So uh, always love the great conversations with the big homie. We'll see him at Mini Nats, I know, and probably maybe before. We'll have to see. But those are the only Airhead Nation updates for this week. If we missed anything, we'll do our best to cover it next week. I know what you're thinking. He didn't talk about hammered weekend wear. Well, guess what? Right after LST next week, H A M M E R D weekendwear.com is coming out with two new heaters. And if you're not involved with the t shirt subscription, then you need to go out to hammeredweekendwear.com and order. I'm telling you, these two are freaking cool. There's, well, I can't, well, yeah, I guess I can't. Maybe I could tell you. There's an SUV, a full size, and there's one of the biggest, baddest, craziest, insane mini trucks ever built. Many of our, you know, many of us, it's our top five, it's our top three. The, The truck has been transformed, previous guest on OLP, and I'm super excited for both of these. Uh, I'm going to need some banners to hang up. Uh, I've got so many shirts now, and that's the cool thing about H-A-M-M-E-R-D. We can wear.com. You can pick up some banners and uh, and shirts and so much more. Let them know that OLP sent you. So about 35 minutes of ODB. Not a record, but trying to get it uh, scaled down some. Enjoy this audio with Matt Winter. Safe travels to everybody going to Lone Star. Hopefully, we'll see you the following weekend at Relaxing on the Ranch. Be safe. Share OLP with the homies, the chicas, the senoritas, and everybody out there in those truck clubs. We appreciate every one of you guys. Stay on the rise. We got you. Peace. Yo, yo, as I mentioned earlier, we're so excited. We're going to Lone Star Throwdown this weekend. So many of you are on the road and you're sticking with us all the way through this episode. And I'm excited to sit down with the big homie, Matt Winter. Matt, brother, how you doing? Doing great, Jason. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, I've been a longtime listener. And it's uh, very humbling to even be asked to, to be on the podcast. So, so, yeah, so thanks for having me. Hey, most definitely. We're you know really trying to do our part to highlight uh, not not just you know the famous trucks, right? But but also the people you know old and younger that make up the scene that we all love. And you know I always appreciate you know being at show, slapping hands with you, coming over to check out the Winter Fab uh, booth. You know we're going to talk a lot about that. I'm anxious to kind of learn some of the backstory. But you know all things considered, is the year going pretty good um, so far for you guys? Well, you know. Like you said, all things considered, you know, it's been a definitely been a interesting past two years, probably for everybody. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, everything's been good. Uh, you know, uh, you know, with uh, COVID and everything, we've been extremely fortunate. Uh, you know, with uh, eBay and website and staying busy. You know, okay. everything's good with the family and good with the work. Hell's yeah, brother! That's what's up. Well, you know, the listeners kind of know as you do. I always like to get a little bit of backstory. So, so for those that may not know you, 
uh, as much as some of your close friends, right? Um, you know, give us a little bit of backstory on yourself, Matt, like maybe where you grew up and uh, where you live now and stuff. Well, I uh, grew up in a little town called Cottageville, South Carolina. Of course, nobody's ever heard of it. If they have, everybody knows it's a speed trap town. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, uh, you know, whenever I talk to people at shows, uh, it's always just the easiest to say, I'm just from Charleston. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, Cottageville, South Carolina. Uh, you know, after high school, moved around a little bit. But, um, but uh, actually ended up coming back to my uh, hometown. Uh, uh, my mom had some property that uh, she was, I think, going to sell half of it. So she offered it to uh, one of her kids. So I decided to, you know, raise my hand. So here I am on my little chunk of property, you know, got shop in the backyard and just loving life out in the country. Hell yeah, brother. And if I look at a map, so basically it looks like it's kind of, for the listeners, Cottageville uh, to the west, I see a uh, Walterboro, and then it's like in the <laughs> middle between there and like Somerville, over in that way. Like, and then then there's you know North Charleston over you know kind of to the east, mm-hmm. but it's kind of in the middle yeah. of those, huh? Yeah, yeah, we're kind of equal distance from Charleston, North Charleston, and actually from Savannah also. So, you know, we don't have much going on in this little town, but we're basically an hour, hour and a half from from plenty of other stuff to do. So. Absolutely. No complaints here. You know, it's uh, you know, I'm I'm much more a fan of the the slower country life. So you know, I'll, I'll stay out here for a while and see how it goes. <laughs> Hell's yeah, brother! Now, what's funny is I'm looking on the map. I can't say these places down 95, like Saltahatchee in Yesemese. It sounds like some Borat stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, we, we got a lot of Native American yes, uh, yeah. towns here. So yeah, we got Saltahatchee, Yemese. Uh, Oki Finoki is one of them. Ooh, I like that. Oh, that that's got a flow yes, to sir. it, bro. That's like a snoot track. <laughs> Oki Finoki, yep. Right, drive past it every time uh, going down ninety five south. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, you know we have a lot. In, you know that wasn't a joke again, for me uh, to Native Americans. We have plenty uh, down here in Florida too. And uh, you know you think about I'll pass over some of the rivers or going to shows and stuff. I'm like, man, I can't even say that, you know, but. Obviously, it goes back many, 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 uh, you know, uh, decades and, and, and centuries, you know, on some of the, the names and stuff. But uh, it's very cool stuff. But so did you like, you know, kind of like when you were back in, in, in the day going to school and stuff like that, you pretty much were used to like a, a small town type uh, atmosphere? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I I grew up on and still live on the same road. So, you know, it was basically, uh, you know, we didn't have the. The, the big suburban childhood, like, kind of, you know, like you see on TVs, you know, a uh, hundred kids, you know, in a neighborhood all meeting up at the bus stop. But uh, what I, where I was lucky was, uh, you know, I had my brother and across the street was two young boys and their neighbor was two more boys. So uh, me and my brother were always the oldest. So, you know, we had our, you know, little little bicycle gang, I guess, that yeah, we yeah. always, you know, rip it up and down the road. And uh, uh, what was kind of cool was uh, one of the dads, he actually worked at a scrap yard, <laughs> like, uh-huh. a, you know, just a junkyard. So he would just randomly bring home bicycles that people would just throw away. You know, so here we are as kids, you know, digging into our, our dad's uh, tools, just, you know, swapping all the parts around, you know, put a 16 inch wheel on this 20 inch bike, you know, just all, all the usual stuff that, you know, everybody, everybody did growing up. So yeah, no, that's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, the small town life and, uh, you know, as most of our stories go on, you know, bikes turned into trucks. So yeah, they did. You know, what was cool is the other night, every time I come in the living room, I was always like, you can put on whatever you want. And I grabbed the little, remote from her and you know i use the apple tv a lot so i go in and i I pull up youtube and she's like immediately gone she's like i don't want to watch this movie site crap or whatever you're watching but i just watched a it was kind of a shorter video and it was uh i don't even know what city it was in it was called the coke killer ride out it was it was like a two almost three minute video it wasn't super long but all it was is you know someone and a bunch of their friends just kind of you know around our age or whatnot you know 
just out riding their 20 inch bikes around, you know, just hanging out like they were kids again. And I was like, man, you know, it brought me back just thinking how easy it is to do, you know, like, I mean, you can, you, you know, you could get the homies together if you got a few and, and go. And I know Chad Luke just went on this big ride out and my buddy Tony does it in Tampa all the time, you know, on bigger bikes and stuff. But it is fascinating to me that, you know, many of us have that, um, that tie in to the bikes, you know, at some point, whether it was, you know, Diener from Low Bros, you know, he he kind of reinforced to me, you know, there's, you know, we always hear old school. He goes, well, this is mid school. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, mid school. But it is pretty cool how we're all tied, you know, to bikes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, I guess you got to start start on wheels somewhere. So, uh, you know, the customized, <laughs> the, the customization bug hits us all. So, uh, you know, and what what better way to do it than our, our ride, you know, as kids. And, you know, of course, you know, we, we didn't have money back then. I mean, mm-hmm. I, at least us growing up, we didn't have money to ha- to even have nice bikes. Yep, and, you know, yep. all, all of all of ours was like mongoose from Walmart. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I guess once we started selling mongoose at Walmart. But, oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we, we had all these junk bikes. And um, what, what, what still to, to this day blows my mind is, uh, y- you know, once, you know, once the Internet came around and we started figuring out that we can – buy our bicycle parts online <laughs> is uh you know we, we would strip these bicycles down to nothing and you know spray paint them chrome or whatever but uh so i i ended up finding this website uh called dance comps online and what's crazy is i believe uh jason thorbeck you know of, of course huge inspiration to all of us but uh he actually was i, I don't know if he worked at dance comp as far as you know turning wrenches or answering phones or what the deal is. But, uh, but yeah, so back in the day when he was working there, uh, you know, we were buying parts for our bikes and sticker kits and basically just making them look like name brand bikes. But needs to say they were uh, junkyard bikes and we were still proud of them. But. Sure. Sure. Yeah. It's, it, it is, uh, it's fascinating that the bike stuff has gotten so big and, you know, I was just talking to my mom last weekend and reminiscing about when they moved into their place in 79. And, you know, my first bike was like this Huffy. It was so heavy. You know, the other kids had these um, lighter bikes. And, like, you know, I had just the biggest – it was the biggest, you know, piece of junk. I mean, it was probably the heaviest bike I think <laughs> I, to, to this day. But, um, you know, we would build these little ramps and we'd jump them. And then I got a, a Mongoose. It was a hand-me-down, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. eventually I did get one new bike. And I think in my life now, like I've had like maybe two new bikes, but most of them were, you know, hand me downs and stuff. But the eighties were so epic with that. And then, uh, you know, the skateboarding, you know, I, I was very much like you where I grew up down a road that, um, you know, some of the, the friends and stuff lived near us, but it wasn't like a neighborhood where my friends were like in Carpenter's run and there was like, you know, a hundred kids, you know? So there was exactly, yeah. yeah, there was a couple of us. So. You know, but it's crazy how the skateboards and the bikes, you know, many of us have memories of that stuff, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I was never into the, the skate scene, but, uh, but, but yeah, it just, it, it just blows my mind how everything just yep. comes back full circle. And, you know, the, the late 80s and early 90s, that, that was a little bit before my time. You know, I'm more of a mid-90s, late-90s kid, I guess, but... uh um, but yeah, I mean, same how just everything is full circle and kind of just seems like it's back to our childhoods now. Yeah, a hundred percent. And, um, I would encourage folks, if you get a chance, go on our YouTube channel, our lifestyle podcast, there was, a uh, um, Matt Weathers had turned me on. I mentioned this before to, um, a bicycle heaven it's called in Pittsburgh. And I did, I did two videos. Um, they're almost the same, but. I did one with kind of a wider angle and one with just the normal. But, dude, when I went to this place, Matt, it was mm-hmm. – there. I mean, dude, it's got to be tens of millions of dollars worth of collection. I mean, it, the amount <laughs> that this guy has amassed. And what's cool is, like you said, you know, making Mike and I feel a little old. Uh, you know, you're a little younger than we are. But, w- like, this guy is, like, my dad's – age generation that owns this place so he's into like a lot of the schwinn stuff and the stuff like the 60s is this a museum or yeah. for sale or it's basically um it's called bicycle heaven and it is it's technically like a bicycle museum is the way it's you know marketed as it's two gotcha. stories and 
he does sell. So he constantly buys, obviously. But, dude, like, you go in some of the rooms, and he has, like, bicycle tires stacked. Like, there's got to be a 1,000 tires there, just <laughs> just there. And I'm like, well, how, how do you even get a truckload of tires, you know? And I ended up talking to the guy for a while, super nice dude. But, um, yeah, you know, it's just crazy how each era of bicycle stuff, you know, um, many of us, you know, have those memories, right? When we were kids, it was kind of like our first freedom, being able to pedal mm-hmm. on that exactly. damn bike. And then, you know, in the, I know the times have changed some, a lot rather, but depending on where you live, you know, back in the day, like we would go, you know, 10 miles away on our bike, you know, and then we'd come back to home base. But I don't know if you could do that. Kind I mean, of yeah, that, 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 that sums it up perfectly. Uh, just the word freedom. I mean, I, I guess that's what, yep. I mean, I don't know about you, but that, that's what I seek when, uh, you know, take, take the, you know, the mighty max out for a cruise or anything, you know, just, it, it's, it's just, the personal space to escape and, you know, put the phone away, just, yes. you know, just cruise, cut up the music and, and yeah, you're right. It, it just, it, it kind of brings you back to, 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 to your childhood, you know, just, just the freedom. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, you know, we've kind of established you grew up in a small town and stuff. So my curiosity is always peaked when I think about, you know, how then did you get involved with custom cars? You know, you mentioned, I want to talk a little bit about some of the rides you've had, but, you know, I grew up north of Tampa, and there wasn't a lot of stuff around, but then there was, boom, there was a mini truck, and that, and that reels me in. So I'm curious to find out, Matt, like, how did you get tied into the whole automotive, you know, kind of scene? Well, uh, my my dad, uh, growing up, he was always a paint and body guy. Okay. So... Uh, mostly during the summertime, we would, my brother and I, we would hang out at the body shop, uh, just all day, every day. And, uh, you know, obviously it, it would get a little monotonous at times, but, uh, but they, they always had these stacks and stacks of, you know, hot rod magazines, you know, and, and similar ones like that. But, uh, so we would just all day, every day, just, sit in customers' cars, uh, you know, find whichever was the coolest car in shop <laughs> and uh, just go sit in their car and just check out these magazines and, you know, just just dream. And uh, so, yeah, so basically it kind of kind of started there and, uh, you know, just seeing the cool stuff that would come in and out of the shop. It wasn't a custom shop or anything, but you know, every now and then, you know, nice stuff would come in, of course. But, uh, but uh, I'll always remember, um, I, I don't remember his name, but... Uh, uh, around the time when my brother started driving, he, he's about a year and a half older than me, but there was a, a, a younger kid at the shop where he worked at. Um, he had, uh, I, I believe it was a Mazda, uh, Mazda or an Isuzu, but, uh, and I, so I guess this had to be around, uh, 2001, 2002, but, uh, it had the, it, it was just, that drop, but I had the, you know, the, the wide wheels, I had the camper shell, I had the, I believe it was a red and white, uh, like a drip style paint job, like nice. a downward drip. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, that's actually one of the first mini trucks I remember uh, seeing uh, when I was younger. Uh, so I, I, I guess it kind of blossomed from there. And, um, you know, f- of course, you know, running Walmart and, you know, grabbing the, I believe a sport truck was one of the, the first magazines I've ever bought on my own. Uh-huh. But, uh, but yeah, so, you know, started checking out the, the, uh, the magazines and, you know, once I got old enough to, to begin to think about driving and what I might want, you know, I just started, uh, you know, checking out the ads and, you know, whatever companies offered the coolest stuff for this and that and just kind of go from there. Yeah, and that's one reason why I also wanted to kind of highlight you and and we want to we want to have that balance uh, from the old school, the OGs as I call them, uh, triple OGs, and then even folks that got in more, you know, maybe five, ten years or so afterwards. It, it you mm-hmm. know when you kind of talk about the early two thousands, you know, even for me, it's ironic because you know although I was reading trucking back in you know like ninety two, ninety three. And, and mini trucking shortly after, it, it, I didn't go to my first show until 96. So, like, you know, you start talking 96 yeah. to 2001. I mean, it's only a five-year difference, you know, or 2002-ish. So, it is kind of crazy to think that, you know, it, the scene does go back pretty far, but sometimes we're connected um, even more so than we even realize, you know? Yeah, 
And, uh, you know, especially thinking back and how, you know, there's certain, or for me at least, there's certain eras of, of mini trucking that kind of define generations, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, so, so obviously the, you know, the, the, I guess what I'll consider the OGs and, you know, the mid nineties style builds that, that was a little bit for my time, but, uh, uh, I, I guess the, the early to mid two thousands is when I like, like really started buying the mini truck in. And, you know, that was the days of like the, uh, you know, the crazy graphics, uh, you know, the paint job, crazy paint jobs yep, and, yep. You know, where every, basically bought everything body drop was the standard. You know, yep. before that, uh, you know, like late nineties, you'd open, open up the magazines and, you know, there, there'd be, of course, you know, static drop stuff, but, you know, a lot of the stuff that was bagged was even just bagged, you know, not even body dropped yet. So it was yep. kind of cool to, you know, to see those changes take place. And, uh, I, I even remember, uh, talking with my brother when we were younger. Uh, talking about, you know, because uh, the, the the Blazer I have now was the vehicle, first vehicle I ended up getting. Mm-hmm. But uh, even back then, I remember saying something about wanting to put airbags on it. And he was like, but but when it's sitting on the ground, you can still see the gap between <laughs> the ground and the body. The, the, you know, the frame is still sitting there. I was like, well, I mean, it's still cool. I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trying to bring me down already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, it's crazy how the standards have changed. But what's ironic is like even with us talking about BMX bikes and skateboarding and stuff, how things you mentioned come full circle. That's a little bit how we've seen this in the scene. I've I've seen some people that were highly uh, ingrained in the scene kind of say, "Yeah, it did get out a little a little out of hand." And if you think back to it, you know the big the bigger wheels drove a lot of that, but. Mm-hmm. I also, you know, like to reinforce you know, and remind people that, you know, thank, thankful or thank, thankfully due to many truckers like Brian Gendro that said, hey, let's put a bag on a truck. And, you know, some of these guys and ladies that were pushing the bigger wheels and stuff, you know, I truly feel like that uh, that sport truck mashup with mini trucks really got us to where we are today, you know, and now we're seeing, although, you know, we can't all afford a brand new truck on, you know, 28s or 30s or whatever, to me, it's cool to oh, see. Oh, no? Yeah, right. You either? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, Mike does owe me a couple bucks, you know. I mean, let's be honest. And then Hank, oh, he, you know. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. If I get three there, two from Hank, I mean, I hit the dog track. I could double up, man. You know what I mean? Quick. But so, so basically, you're saying if we happen to see Project Banana Hammock sitting at a title loan place, that's because dude, you finally dude. pressured him for that few bucks. Yeah, dude, my man. Yeah, see, if we, Mike, if you're listening, <laughs> I know he doesn't listen, but we got to get him to a title loan deal, you know, but... But, uh, you know, what's cool is where we are today, I know some people, you know, the mini truckers are going to believe me, but, you know, a lot of the C10 guys even, you know, they're, they're, you know, these full frames and things like that. You know, I truly do believe that, you know, the mini truckers really helped to push that stuff. And, you know, we, we oh, as mini truckers, right, yeah. we, we jump from minis to, okay, full-size trucks, laying them on the ground, you know, guys like our customs and and even to IF and those guys were really pushing it. So, you know, I'll get off my tangent there, but I, I mean, I, I, I'm thankful for the people that have got us to where we are. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, uh, tangent or not, I mean, you're, you're right. Uh, it's, I think with mini trucks, especially it's, you know, we all have the buddies where it's, you know, you're always trying to one up each other and, yep. you know, things just kind of always get blown out of proportion between you and your buddies and then you start going to shows and then <laughs> right. you know maybe you're trying to one up this guy at the show and then you go to bigger shows and you know i i guess uh many trucks just have a way of uh spiraling out of control and, <laughs> right. they did you know next thing you know we have these insane builds that just you know give all these you know hot rods and street rods you know at, at these big you know like events uh, you know, you, yeah, like the Riddler Awards, you know, these days you've got these mini trucks giving all those a run for their money. And it's just, it, it blows my mind seeing, you know, a, a, just a ton of work and, you know, such a small package, you yeah. know, it, it just gets overlooked a lot. Yeah, there's a guy that we're going to have on soon, you know, since we're on the topic. And I'm looking at these photos and I'm going, dude, you know, it may not be everybody's cup of tea from a mini truck perspective, but I look at the work in it and I'm going, dude. Like this is like a million dollar mini truck. Like the, the metal work is just insane, <laughs> you know, insane. But 
you know, it, it is, um, it's cool how, you know, things all tend to come back, you know, fashions and things like that. And it's no different with mini trucks because we've seen the explosion of the old parts. You know, if you had a whole warehouse full of old, like, 90s, 2000 parts, you know, cab visors, toppers with windows, you name it, all that mm-hmm. stuff. Dude, it's worth gold now, you know. And I know a couple people that are kind of, you know, flipping stuff and buying and finding good sellers and, and getting the people the parts they want, which I love. But um, as you know, it's not easy to find all of that old stuff. So, but um, let me ask you this, though. You know, I, I've seen the Blazer that you've mentioned, and then I believe you have a Mitsu. Talk to us a little bit about the current, like some of the mini trucks that you've even recently had or that you currently have. Uh, well, the, the, the Blazer, uh, that was my, my very first ride. Like I said, when I was, uh, when I was about 14, you know, is when I started uh, figuring out what, what I would be saving for to be my first vehicle so uh so yeah i got the the blazer now it's uh it's an 87 um but like i said um it was my first vehicle so i got that when i was 15 so uh 30 35 now so i've had it longer than i haven't had it so uh that was definitely not not ever going anywhere but uh so i also got a a 96 mighty max so uh this one uh, when I first started the business, uh, I kind of bought it to 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 kind of help decide where the business was going to go. So um, so uh, you know, kind of tore that one apart down to you know down to bare frame, you know, and all that good stuff. So uh, so yeah, so so basically, I got the Mighty Max now. I got the the eighty seven Blazer, and actually the the wife, you know, she's she's in the mini trucks. She was actually in them before I even met her, so that was pretty cool. But uh, dude, so that's has, awesome! Uh, you knew that she was a keeper, yes, then, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We actually we we got a little bit of a backstory for that one too. But uh, so she has a one Blazer Extreme. So, uh, so yeah, that that's what we currently have. And uh, you know, I had a had a Trailblazer SS uh, in the in the past. You know, it, it was all wheel drive, so didn't really want to really get too far involved as far as uh, getting too over the top with that one. Sure. But, uh, had a 04 single cab that, uh, you know, just a four, six drop. I did the, the SS front end, you know, the grill, uh, bumper, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. But, uh, but yes, but so basically what's remained a constant over all these years is, is the blazer. You know, it's, you know, what, what, what keeps me sane, you know, I, I know she'll always be there for me. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it, it seems like it, it's, it's like one of those lifelong builds that I don't know if it'll ever be finished, but at the same time, I don't know if I want it to be finished yep. because, yeah, it, you know, it's, it, you know, there's always something to work on. And, you know, when, you know, when you've had a tough week or whatever, you know, you know, you can always go out there and, and tinker with something. You know? Yeah, so, relieve some stress. And I kind of call that. I guess not the best term, but it's almost like a security blanket because I have, you know, things that I kind of like, I have a mess somewhere in my shop and I'm like, I don't want that cleaned up because if it's cleaned up, then I don't have something to clean up. You know, it's kind of weird, right? The way my mind works, but you know, to exactly, your point, yep. you kind of have this, you know, you, you have this, this, this project over there that you can tinker on and you, you know, as you've been around this stuff a long time, it's like, I've talked to my buddies in the past, you know, when you start like painting stuff and finishing interior and doing all this stuff then you're like oh you know oh my you know get your hands off it and all this for me it's kind of a relief to have something that you kind of go eh you know it's all right i rubbed up against it nothing's messed up on it you know what i mean so exactly i I know exactly what you mean that (laughs) i mean that and you know it's to, to me you know if 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 i had something that was too perfect i guess then you know it's just like um uh Several weeks ago, we were at a, a, a local charity show, and uh, uh, we had the, the Mighty Max out there. And at the time, the wife had a, a 16 Silverado that we, we lowered down, did a 5.7 uh, drop. Um, so we had our two trucks out there. And uh, so this, this uh, group walked up, and uh, he just he's just standing there, and he's grinning ear to ear, looking at the <laughs> Mighty Max. And, uh, you know, it's it's got a stock floor body drop and everything but you know the the body is pretty pretty stock looking i guess but um 
but he's he's just like I, I can't believe it's so low and <laughs> and you know just asking all the standard questions you know how does it work and I'm like I'm I just looked at him I said open the door get in <laughs> yeah so he's like oh my god really I'm like yeah sit in uh, so you know he's sitting in and you know his, his buddy's taking pictures of him so you know if you had a hundred two hundred thousand dollar build you know would you really want somebody sitting in it right but, you know for for me you know it's it's all about those memories just you know let, letting letting the you know bystanders you know when, Enjoy you, when you cruise it to you know to town or you know a spectator at a show you know they want to check it out you know i don't have to be you know overly protective of it of it you know because because I'm not. So. Yeah. Well, that's like this past weekend. We went to my buddy Jason Fitzpatrick, who I call nickname Fitzmagic. And he was like, hey, Jay, you want to go down to this Rides by the River? And, you know, he's got a 49 shoebox Ford. I was like, dude, I'd love to. You know, I only had a few hour window, then had to help Mom Duke. So we link up, we go down there, and, you know, I take the link in, and, and you know, all these people asking a lot of questions. And, and I love talking to people about cars and, this one, um, it was like the mother and father, they were older, and then their daughter was there, and then their daughter had, the you know, her kids. So the grandkids were there, and they're like, you know, they were just talking about the car, and they're like, hey, can we take a photo in the car with the kids? And, you know, I was like, have at it, you know? I mean, to me, oh, yeah. I do know people that are like, oh, my God, like, I don't even like opening my door, to, you know, to, to show <laughs> people. And I'm like, dude, that's, to me, that's not the approach, you know? I, I, I. Maybe I got this from my dad. I like talking to people about it and saying, hey, check it out, man, you know. But to your point, it makes it even easier to do that. I mean, if you had something, you know, you're not going to be able to do that like at a Riddler or War type, you know, deal like, yeah, climb in there. But, you know, the stuff that we're doing, we're talking about is, to me, is, is you know, keep it, you know, keep it legit, you know. Let, let people enjoy it as well. But um, the blazer that you have, right, kind of flat black, it kind of has the, the scallop type uh, mm -hmm. design on it, but it also has like the snorkel, uh, scoop deal. And then it has the old dash and then the bench seat. Right. So those are some of the, the things I remember from it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, uh, you know, there's like, like I said, still a, a ton of work to do to it, but, but yeah, I did the, um, I did the dash out of, uh, you know, it's always just easier to tell people 59 Impala, but it's actually out of, uh, a 60 or a 61 El Camino, uh, found it on ebay uh years years ago uh that you know back before everybody was after a, a metal dash and you know sent the price was sky high but uh i can't remember when i actually bought it you know because it took years to get in you know sure. story of, of all of our lives Many truckers, right. <laughs> but uh <laughs> so i i bought it on ebay and the guy sent me a message he, he said hey what's your number you know and i thought that was kind of weird but uh, anyway sent him my number and uh he actually gives me a phone call and uh, he, uh, l luckily, he wasn't a purist because um, at the time, I had no idea that these dashes actually were part of the car. He's like, hey, I, I, I got to cut this thing out. Uh, so how much of it, uh, how much <laughs> do you need of it? <laughs> You're like, and I was like, well, I was like well, to, well, to be honest, you know, it's going in a 87 Blazer. So, uh, you know, I, it, I don't need, you know, all the, you know, the specific brackets and stuff. And you don't even have to be overly careful cutting this thing out. Just, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, just box it up and send it to me. But, uh, yeah, so I, I, I wanted to do, you know, kind of a, kind of a retro, I guess, vintage type theme. So, you know, I went with the, uh, the old school dash and like you said, did the scallops and painted the scallops on there. The overall blazer still looks a little plain. So I did the red roof on it and, uh, actually had a, a, a Cobalt SS a while back that I, I kind of acquired and uh, ended up selling that. And uh, the guy I sold it to was a local guy here in town that's known all over in the hot rod scene for, for pinstriping, you know, the old school uh, hand lettering on the doors, uh -huh. you know, for, you know, for the, the old school stuff. And uh, so when he came over to pick up the, the Cobalt, he's like, I, I, I know... I know you said you wanted to to do the pinstripe outline yourself, but uh, but I, I'd 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 really love to take care of this for you. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, all right. Well, come to find out, you know, when I sold the cobalt, it was you know I put lowering springs and everything on it. And he he's an older guy, and you know his wife's older, and uh, the the, the car rode like a brick. You know, I'm not even going to lie, but uh, 
So a week after buying it is when he kind of gave me a call and he's like, hey, uh, how about you put those stock springs back on and I pinstripe your blazer for you? You know, just to, you know, swap my time for putting the springs back on and he gives me the pinstripe. And so, but yeah, you know, that's how, uh, that's how basically how it currently sits. You know, I don't have much of a, uh, you know, any, any, work done into the back of it, you know, except for, you know, compressors are in place and, you know, the tank and everything. And, but, uh, yeah, well, know, it looks good. I really like the dash in it. And like you said, I tend to even forget that, um, those dashes kind of went into the El Caminos into the early sixties. Mm -hmm. so. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, I always tell the wife, if there's any El Camino that I'll ever own, it'll be that, uh, you know, late fifties, early sixties style, uh, you know, it's just, you know, they got the fins on the back and they still share, you know, all the, the sheet metal from the, you know, the cab forward and yep. just, just gorgeous cars. Yeah, I mean, you might hurt Mike's feelings because, you know, Mike doesn't want me to talk about this, but, you know, he his next, you know, we've all kind of got a list in our head of the vehicles we want to build and he's talking about building like an early 80s El Camino, you know what I mean? He wants to, oh. <laughs> to kind of lift it, he said, and put some bigger wheels, and he calls them rims, you know, and tires. So, I mean, I don't know how that's going to come out, but, you know. Well, that, I, think, I, I, I seem to remember uh, a meme or something where, yeah. where uh, it might have been real, but Mike uh, had a mullet, yeah, and uh, exactly. I could really see him uh, in an 80s El Camino rocking Dude. that mullet and maybe blasting some Journey or Def Leppard. <laughs> yeah, fishtailing out of the, the post office, but I'll have to be careful because, you know, they, they're always <laughs> speed, you know, they've got the speed guns going around there, I heard. So, but, um, well, so the Blazer to me, I really like it, man. I, I do. I dig it. But, you know, the Mitsubishi, as Mike likes to call it, uh, the S10, the, I mean, those they have a soft place in my heart because I've talked about this a lot. Local kid drove one, 88 Mighty Max, white with a topper, you name it. And that's what re really reeled me in. So I, I've, I've always, you know, been like, man, you know, I love just the Wyatts uh, from Negative Camber. Oh, yeah. And, you know, there's just, you know, Ben Smith, uh, his S10 is just awesome. But there's so many good people, you know, so, so many awesome Mighty Maxes out there, right? The, these Mitchus. Uh, rest in peace, Ernie. You know, Ernie. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. He, he was the yeah, biggest his, fan. His, uh, yeah. His definitely set the bar, you know, had the tilt bed and everything. And you're, yeah. you're right, you know, rest in peace to him. And uh, Yeah. But, yeah, you know, I, I remember I had, I used to save pictures of, uh, of his truck, you know, back in the uh, street scene. Yep. Uh, street scene days, you know, just saving yeah. pictures and, and, and dreaming. Yeah. Yeah. And talk to us a little bit about it because, you know, the photos I've seen of it, you know, like you said, you, you hinted a little bit like the back half and things like that. Um, you know, what are some of the other things done to the Mitsubishi and, you know, what are some of the plans maybe? Uh, well, it, so, like I said earlier, I, I wanted to keep the, the body kind of stock looking. So, you know, no, no shaved handles, you know, the wipers are all still there, the, even the hood squirters, all that good stuff. But um, I wanted to kind of, I, I guess, showcase what I could do because, like I said, at the time, I wasn't sure what direction the business would go. So the, the Mighty Max was kind of the deciding factor and uh, – so basically, once I, you know, got, bought it and brought it home, you know, had it completely torn down to, to the, the frame and the engine the next day. And uh, so, so it's basically, uh, you know, a frame, you know, new frame from the engine back, uh, did the cantilever on the back and uh, stock interior, um, uh, billet steering wheel. I, I just wanted something to just jump in and drive and you know, it's been all of that and more, you know, just, you know, just take time and uh, do things the right way the first time. And, you know, hopefully you won't have those issues going down the road. But Yep. Now, what are your plans for it? I mean, do you want to go, you know, you're thinking kind of a long term, right? Just tinker on it when you can. Well, th there's, there's a few more things I'd like to do. Uh, I, I wanted to build like a little, I, I wanted the bed to still be somewhat usable right, right now. There's, it's, absolutely not usable at all you know it's basically straight bedsides all the way to the ground so there's if if i if i want to throw a cooler back there basically it sits on top of the fuel cell and just ratchet strap it to whatever piece of metal edge i can find but so 
basically the only the only goals I have at the moment uh, for it uh, in the future is uh, I want to do kind of kind of a basket type deal to kind of I want it to look like it's kind of just hovering over everything that's already back there. You know, the fuel cell, uh, rear end, uh, you know, drive shaft. So it'll it'll kind of just sit over that. You know, just to, you know, throw a couple chairs, canopy, cooler. You know, yep. But at, at the end of the day, I, I don't want to do anything to to, to make it not drivable because uh, you know the the wife and I we we like going on our uh, we, we we have a we, we do a date night. Uh, weekly, basically. So, you know, we, we pick somewhere to, to go out to dinner and we, we like to take the Mighty Max. Uh, you know, it, it kind of, you know, it kind of helps break up the monotony of sure. working from my backyard shop to, uh, you know, I don't have uh, a commute to work. So, you know, I, I do look forward to, you know, this weekly date night and, you know, we, you know, local cruise-ins and all that good stuff just to just to be able to get yes. out from the shop and from the, the house, you know. So, but yeah, I, I just want to kind of keep it, keep it simple, uh, and just be a reliable driver. And, uh, so, uh, yes, uh, yeah. per, pretty much it for, for now. Yeah. If you ever want to sell it, let me know. I love these trucks. I had my eye on one locally recently and I decided not to pick it up. I mean, it was a stock truck and they're hard to find, uh, admit you, but I've always loved them. And, you know, we'll share some photos for the listeners, but I'll tell you this. What was cool is you had a photo that appeared in one of the custom trucks mags and yeah, it was, yeah. um, <laughs> August of like kind of last year. And, uh, that was really cool because it really, it brought a smile on my face because, you know, around that time, I think that issue came out in June, but you know, mm-hmm. we lost Ernie rest in peace, as we said, um, around that time. And when every time I see that truck, even though it's yours, Anytime I see a Michu, right, a Mighty Max, I always think of Ernie. And when I think of – when I see yours, I go, man, Ernie uh, no doubt loved that truck. And, and, and I just – I know his love for these trucks. So it kind of uh, – it's one of those things that just conjures up, you know, a good memory of Ernie anytime I see one of these badass. Mm-hmm. Super low like yours is Mighty Max, dude. I think yours is lower than Banana Hammock. I mean, if we had a lower <laughs> – I mean, I think yours is lower, so Mike needs to step up. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean you're, you're right. I mean this the, the Mighty Maxes they they, they it, it's something about them. They they always had a, a soft spot uh, for me. You know, I, I actually I, I had another one uh, right out of high school. Yeah, I, it was about '05, and uh, uh, my first one the the first one I had it was '94, uh, I believe. You know, so still had the same front end and everything. Yes, yeah. And uh, you know, I, I did the typical. Uh, high schooler type of drop, you know, cut the springs, remove leaf springs. And, uh, actually I, uh, I, I did a suicide driver's door using Jeep Wagoneer hinges from the junkyard mm-hmm. and, um, <laughs> learn my lesson on that. You know, if, you, if you're going to go the cheap route with hinges, do not go cheap on the latch. <laughs> so what happened the the girl I dated all throughout high school, you know, I was still dating her uh, when I got out of high school, and um, so so one evening she she gives me a call, you know, to you know come over, and uh, earlier in that day I was driving to work, yeah, you know, I, I, at that time I worked an hour from home, and uh, driving to work the uh, suicide door decided to come open at 60 Ooh, miles an hour. <laughs> shit. So, of course, it creased the entire cab, you know, t- you know, at every point the, the door could touch at 60 miles an hour, you know, it creased about a half inch or an inch deep. So, of course, you know, she, long story short, she uh, had me come over because she wanted to break up. So, <laughs> what a terrible day that was, you know. You know, forget the girlfriend. You know that that's old news. But geez, that that door flying open at highway speeds. Uh, you know that was uh, <laughs> uh, an, an eye opener. <laughs> so uh, yeah. think about the next week. I had to drive around with the door ratchet strap around the steering column just to keep the door shut. And uh, <laughs> dude, that you know just had to get in and out of the passenger side. <laughs> dude, I mean, I hate to bring this up, but I mean, Hank, that's kind of. His last build, he it involved ratchet straps around steering columns, and you know, dry, I mean, he had a 
the key he would put into the steering column to start it was a it was a screwdriver. I don't, I don't know how he did right. that, but then he had some sort of crescent wrench that, for his steering wheel. So I mean, I've seen some weird shit. So like what you I mean, I know like what you just shared. I think that's kind of more like normal mini truck shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, you, you know, just like with everything, you you learn from you learn lessons and you just move on, make yeah. it better next time. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, one of my good friends, Marlin, lives near me. Hopefully, we'll get him on as a guest. He built one of the the nicest, cleanest, coolest S10s back in the day. Courtney shot it, and a um, few years go by, he decides to sell it. And ironically enough, it recently popped up. None of us had ever seen it. It went up to the northeast. But the story that ties in is the guy that bought it. He sat. Apparently, recollection I have is he sat on the key fob. Okay. So Marlon sold the truck and trailer together. A guy comes down, picks it up, drives it home, right? You know, trailers at home. Well, mm-hmm. the guy either sits on the key fob or it's in his, his pants or whatever. Well, it pops the door open. And they weren't suicide doors, but when it popped the door open as he's going down the interstate, you can imagine the doors like just, you know, going between, you know, trying oh, yeah. to close and hitting the fender right on the trailer. And he said it, you know, it got all messed up, and you know the guy had called, and at some point, I th- I think if my memory serves me correct, the guy was like, well, man, is there anything you can, you know, that you can do for me here on this? And he's thinking, you know, hey, there's nothing I can do, but that's what you know your story reminded me a little bit of that because it's like, you know, you never want your door flying open when you're going down the road, no matter if it's on a trailer or not. Exactly, and I, I remember uh, <laughs> that morning when it happened. You know, I was, I was on the way to work, but obviously that wouldn't happen. So, like I said, my, my dad was a paint and body guy, and um, he was working at a shop, but he still had his shop at, at the house that he did side work in. So I just went ahead and, you know, drove to his shop and, you know, opened the doors, pulled it in, shut the doors, you know, just try to get everything taken care of before anybody knows what happened. He you know, obviously I was embarrassed and yeah. pissed about it. So, you know, I pulled the truck into his shop, Sling the door open, and of course, I'm pissed off. He just finished painting, uh, maybe a, a day or two before, uh, a 90s Mazda RX-7. So when I get into a shop, sling the door open, it hits the Mazda. <laughs> wow. Puts a, it didn't ding it or anything, but it put a nice little scratch and scuff in the paint. And... Uh, I, I never told him about that, and unfortunately, he's he's not with us anymore. But um, Man. but but yeah, just the icing on the cake, you know, kick open the door in frustration, and it smacks the side of a freshly painted paint job. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that's those are kind of the cringe moments. But you mm-hmm. um, you know, so you got these cool vehicles and whatnot, and you know, I see you at different shows and and and, and these things. What I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about Winter Fab because I think that's – I feel like that's how I met you, you know, coming up to the booth at different shows throughout the southeast and whatnot and kind of Midwest areas. Uh, talk mm-hmm. to us about, like, how did the idea come about for your company, Winter Fab, you, you, you and your wife's company? Yeah. Well, uh, right out of high school, I, I was extremely fortunate to get a, a military contracting job. Uh you know, got my foot in the door, and uh, it actually ended up lasting about 10 years, you know, with, with most military contracts. You know, they come and they go. But um, so towards the end of that uh, 10 years working, you know, that type of type of job, uh, I, I did a, a ton of travel just going from shipyard to shipyard. Uh, I worked on submarines, aircraft carriers, stuff like that. Damn. And uh, to be honest, I, I just got tired of the travel. I, I just, I, I couldn't take it anymore. You know, <laughs> um, you know, we travel for most of the year. And I always tell people, you know, a- after a few weeks in the same hotel room, it just, the, the, the walls just start closing in on you. And uh, it, it was really affecting my, my, my stress level, uh, and and all that stuff. So I, I, I had to I had to make something happen. And uh so you know, obviously I always work on things and uh make make some one off stuff here and there. And uh so I started thinking, I was like, well maybe I can make something of this. So 
I actually got the LLC for Winter Fabrication uh, in 2013 without having any idea what direction it's going to go. Mm-hmm. And like I said, uh, with the Mighty Max, that's when around the time I, I bought it. And I was like, well, maybe it's going to go in the direction of building trucks. Well, you know, obviously from a small town, not a, a ton of work to be had around here. So, uh, you know, obviously I, I had the truck and I was working on it. So I was like, well, shit, uh, <laughs> you know, why not, instead of buying parts for this truck, why not buy the tools to do everything I need for this truck? You know, so that's when the, the plastic table kind of came into to play. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so basically the, the Mighty Max helped with a lot of those early parts that I designed, you know, to, to add to the eBay store, you know, eventually a website. So that, that's kind of how the, uh, you know, where, where we're at now with selling on eBay and everything, that's how it all started is just my own need for it and my, my lack of wanting to travel anymore for, for my, my air quote real job. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, you know, and luckily we're, we're still here, you know, making parts. So, you know, extremely thankful for that. Yeah, and it's a cool backstory of kind of where you got to where you are at Winter Fab. Talk to us about some of the, the things that people can buy or some of the things that you guys and your wife that you produce. Uh, well, we, we have, uh, there's a few different, I, I guess what I would call like groups of stuff. So we, we sell, you know, mini truck related stuff, uh, you know, uh, brackets, tabs, gussets, uh, you know, switch box holders, the air compressor mounts, you know, all that, all that fun stuff. And, uh, so that, that's kind of one part is, is the mini truck stuff. So then we also sell like decorative hitch covers. Uh, we got kind of a whole line of garage organizing racks, you know, tool racks and stuff like that. And all of those came out of my own personal need for them. You know, my, I, I try to stay extremely organized in the shop. You know, I always tell the wife, you know, the whole cliche thing, you know, like a, an organized shop is an efficient shop. So, you know, I started making all these tool racks and one thing led to another. And the next thing you know, we, we kind of have something for everything these days. And uh, so that's, that's basically what, what keeps us busy and what's keep, what keeps the lights on is just these, uh, you know, these, what I consider simple mini truck parts and tool racks and, and hitch covers, you know? Yeah. Very cool. I would encourage people to go to winterfabonline.com and you could check out some of the cool stuff. You know, there were things that I knew that you made because I've seen them on eBay, like the Vire compressor stands, Optima battery, top or side post battery trays, but also Mm -hmm. I like some of the garage stuff, like 14-slot wrench holder rack. You know, some of the stuff is very affordable because if you start looking at I have a. I only have one, but I have a Gladiator um, metal uh, shelving right in my shop, and I had bought it like at Sears. And the other day, I was looking for additional things, and I was like, "Oh wow, they have you know these different things you can hook on the end, and then you can hang stuff up and everything." And I'm like, "Oh, that's thirty five bucks. That's forty bucks." And some of it seems fair, some of it seems yeah. high. But what's cool is you can go out here and you know with the air tool stuff you offer, grinder racks. And things like that, you can really organize your garage, uh, whether it, you know whether it be a small garage or you know a, a professional shop. Yeah, I mean, and we we cater to both. You know, we we've done deals with you know big name shops who have asked us if they could paint them their own colors and sell them as their own. And you know, we we we've made deals behind the scenes, and uh, you know, we we're a uh, we're uh, a shop for for you know, catering to big shops and little shops. And, uh, you know, I always tell everybody about, you know, we obviously try to be as affordable as possible and steel prices are insane these days. But, you know, what helps us keep our prices reasonable is the fact that, you know, we're just a mom and pop type of business and we're right here in my backyard. We don't have much overhead. 
And, you know, we also don't paint or powder coat anything. So that helps us keep the price down, you know. So, so basically everything we offer is more of a, like a DIY type, type deal. So, yeah. And it's still good product, which is great. And one of the things that I noticed in social media was the metal flowers that you and your wife had put out and these roses, Mm -hmm. if you will, were very, very cool. They sold out. It seemed, seemed pretty quick. Uh, those type of things, right, might be a cool gift for a dude to get for his wife or whatever. Um, do you um, do you um, foresee stuff like that being back in you know in stock, or was that just kind of a one time run? That was kind of uh, you know like the I guess what I would consider metal art. You know, so yeah, we we did like the handcrafted steel flowers that we would run at Valentine's Day and Mother's Day, uh, and we did a lot of um, you know you see like the 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 real nice looking uh tattered metal flags you know with the nice paint jobs and everything and we we did all that too and um but basically the the way i did it with the business starting out was i'll let the market decide which path i'm going to go and once i really noticed that all the tool racks and hitch covers and stuff like that were like really taken off, uh, you know, you kind of have to pick your poison. So, you know, I, I'd rather put out parts that we could, you know, take, take the order quick and ship quick, you know, because at the end of the day, uh, as, as much as we hate to say it, we're all kind of in competition with Amazon. And I, I know that sounds horrible, but, uh, you know, everybody kind of, gets used to the super fast shipping times and all that stuff. So, you know, by, by kind of staying away from like the, the metal flowers and, you know, the metal art yep, these yep. days, you know, it helps us like really get out what we do make. It, it helps us get it out really fast. And you know, that's one of the big things that our customers are really appreciative of is just quality parts and super fast shipping. So, you know, we, we, Take, me and the wife, we take a, a ton of pride in that. So, you know, we're for now, we're just going to, you know, stick with what we've been doing efficiently. And, you know, in the future, you know, we we'll, might scale and maybe start doing some of the artsy side again. But, yep. yeah, for now, we're for now we're just sticking with the, the simple thing. Yeah, excellent. You can go out on winterfabonline.com and see things like Airlift, 3P, 3H, V2, air manifold mounts. Again, I mentioned via compressors. We love those compressors and lots of different things to, you know, there's some things I've, you know, just doing this interview that have piqued my interest. And I think I've seen before, but I need to pull the trigger soon on, you know, some of the drill racks and things like that, because, you know, once you start getting organized, it's such a great feeling to be able to go like walk in your, in your garage or your shop and go, man, instead of me having all my batteries laying over here or messing up my toolbox, I've got it all nice and hung up and things like that. And, you know, one of my buddies, Joey, we've had him on before, Joey and Heather, you know, he's he has sent me some cool stuff about organization that he does at his home uh, garage and stuff. And, dude, I tell you what, man, it's it could get addicting. So, you know, I would tell people get out there. <laughs> yeah, get out there and check out Winter Fab online. And um, I want to hit on this, though. You mentioned the E word, eBay. Um, I love yeah. eBay. I'm on there way too much. But I've seen you guys list stuff on there, and that's going to be a great uh, marketplace for you because I'd imagine you have you know, clients, customers all over the world. Yeah, uh, you know that's you know eBay, love it or hate it. You know a lot of people call it the was it China Bay or you know all that. But uh, it's it's been a great tool for us. You know it's costly as far as their fees and everything, but but yeah, it it really opens the door for you know international customers. Uh, um, but believe it or not, um, a while back, uh, we had somebody contact us through just through eBay Messenger saying, hey, we'd love to use the, uh, one of your items on, on a movie. Oh, uh, wow. W- w- would we have your permission? And, you know, I, I didn't think anything about it. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm like, yeah, of course, you know. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, so, so months went by, and, and like I said, I never thought anything about it. So I'm sitting on, t- you know, I, I used to, I used to love the show Walking Dead, and uh, every Sunday, as soon as it came on, that's where I'd be on the couch. So I'm sitting there, watching the episode, and no shit, <laughs> there's my part 
right there on TV. So, so what it was was uh, they actually bought, as, as dumb as it sounds, a middle finger hitch cover. Really? You know, something that stupid for me to come up with and, and make. <laughs> Wow. Uh, a middle finger. So what, how, how they ended up using it was, uh, I'll, I'll try to be quick here, but there's a scene where, you know, one group kind of takes over the other group. So they, of all things, they had a, you know, the, um, and I know Walking Dead is on the channel, AMC, but you know the car uh, AMC Gremlin? Yeah. So they, they took an AMC Gremlin and basically armor plated all the windows <laughs> and pushed it into this other group's little area to kind of, you know, get all the walkers, you know, uh-huh. attention and kind of. So the the girl runs around to the back of the gremlin to try to open the window, and there's my middle finger welded to the back of the gremlin. <laughs> but you know, front and center, they even zoomed in on it on on the episode. No so, way, I mean, and you and you just saw. I mean, you you had. The I world that they had yeah, asked, but then you were watching it, and what was your reaction, dude? I jumped up, screamed, paused it, rewinded, it, pick, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> taking pictures of the TV with my right. phone. Uh, yeah. But but yeah, I mean, it, it's just one of those moments that uh, you know, starting out with really small beginnings. You know, I, I'd never assume just by listing some of these what some people might call silly parts on eBay. You know, it it. Here it wow. is, right there on The Walking Dead. So, you know. Dude, well, when you were describing the AMC Gremlin, right? <laughs> the AMC, that that's mm-hmm. kind of what Hank wants to build from Hammered Weekend Wear. Like, he wants to <laughs> basically make it like a tank, you know, and, and put, you know, not even have a windshield, just have a, a GoPro on the front of the car and then hooked up to his phone so he can drive off that. I'm like, dude, I don't know if that's safe, man. Well, there you go. Hank the tank in a tank. I, I could, I could, I dude, could definitely see that happening. Dude, man, we need you on board coming up with the little uh, the catchphrases. The uh, I sent my <laughs> wife. I sent it to Ron yesterday too. There was a, there was, a, I'm not making this up. There was a bear that was loose, and I forget what city. And his nickname is 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 uh, Hank the Tank. So I sent it to Ron, and I go, dude, Hank's got some competition here, man. I mean, you got real animals coming after him, dude. Yeah, I, I think I saw that that. Uh, video clip that you're talking about you know and it, and it was you know I'd, I'd hate to see a bear come through my backyard <laughs> right uh right. now what i would hate even more if i saw hank creeping through my backyard <laughs> right. I, I might <laughs> dude that i might would, have to right. call somebody on that one <laughs> yeah start cocking some triggers or something you know because mm. I mean? dude that's like yeah that would be a little scary man because <laughs> i mean he's he's crazy but he's wrestled he's wrestled uh apparently bears uh I know I've I could seen, see that. we've seen the movie with DiCaprio where he gets into the bear fight and, and all that. And, you know, I think a mm-hmm. lot of that was like Hank wrote those parts, I think. But, you know, that's another that's for another episode. But um, <laughs> what's cool is Winter Fab, right? So your last name is Winter, right? So that, that mm-hmm. comes over to Winter Fabrication, uh, short Winter Fab. But what's also awesome, uh, my understanding is you've been in business, you know, you're, you're kind of going in that nine, that ten-year mark. Do you ever yeah. – do you ever sit back and reflect and just go, wow, man, it's been a hell of a run. You know, your wife's by your side, you're right or die. Um, do you ever just think back and say, man, we've came a long way? I, I do all, all the time. And, uh, you know, I, I, I do appreciate you asking that too. Um, but, you know, it's, it's unbelievable just thinking. And, and you know, it, it's, my, my story isn't any different than anybody else's. And, and anybody can, can do it. You know, it's just it, – you, you know, just whatever you put your mind to, just just stick with it, you know, mm-hmm. no matter what it is. You know, we, we all have ups and downs, you know, especially over the past couple of years. Um, sure. But, you know, as long as you're just persistent with wh- whatever you're into, just, you know, just stick with it. And, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, it's, uh, you know, it, it'll, it'll all work out, you know, just. You just um, gotta keep you know, pushing just be, hard. Be, 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 yes, sir. Be persistent, and um, but yeah, I I tell the wife all the time. You know, I just I can't believe that you know here it's been almost ten years later. You know, let's cheers and hope for another ten years. You know, hell's yeah, that's the way you gotta think about it. Um, when I mentioned the website, you know, there's cool stuff, everything from battery trays to bag mounts to the hitch covers, which I love, different gussets license plates, you know, different things, man, I, I love the keychain stuff, right? 
what's if you had to guess based based upon your you know your workflow every day what's one of the maybe the the big the best sellers that you guys have that you kind of feel like goes out the door a little bit more than other stuff uh the current best seller is like you said you, you mentioned a few minutes ago the the airlift uh, mounts. Now we we offer mounts for basically almost every brand of air manifold, you know, compressors, all that stuff. Yep. Uh, so airlift mounts are are huge sellers. Uh, we sell a ton of the uh, you know the recessed plate boxes. Mm-hmm. You know, for you know for you know you see a lot of times angled and tail tailgates or yep. you know wherever you want to put them. Uh, you know, we sell a ton of those and uh, the Torex. Uh, that uh, that's some of our our, our biggest sellers. Nice. But uh, but but c- kind of as you were describing things just now, we we just have a ton of variety on the website from so many years of just adding this and that and you know whatever. It it can be a little overwhelming, you know. You know, some days I'll get orders, you know, especially on a Monday, at, at, you know, after a long weekend or whatever, I'll get orders for just random and just mix match things and it can be overwhelming but you know i got to remind myself right. it's like well shit I, i've been adding this stuff to the website over the course of of years so uh yeah so hey, like, like, like most of the stuff you know if, if i've had a need for it and or if a customer has had a need for a particular part uh i'll throw it on the website and you know if they need it somebody else might need it so right. it just it's kind of snowballed from there yeah, well, you know, there's one word that causes that randomness, you know what I mean? And it's it's alcohol, dude. You know, it's alcohol <laughs> these weekends. You Someone's drinking on eBay, and they go, man, I need one of these, man, you know? I hey, can't no, say that no I've never done here. that. <laughs> no, I know. Oh, no, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, we're talking to Matt Winter from Winter Fab. Again, Winter Fab Online. Uh, you're on social media. Obviously, it's easy to find you, Winter Fab, Facebook, Instagram. Man, dude, it's been cool linking up. I mean, again, I yeah, man. I look at what you've done, and and you've you've really kind of made your mark. And I love having been in the scene twenty five plus years, seeing a lot of folks come and go. I'm sure you have as well, but I love seeing a business like yours that has it's a staple now. You know, it's been around. You guys are in it oh, for that, the long haul. That means home. a lot just to just yeah. to even hear that. Yeah, you know, to me, it, it means a lot because, you know, we've, you know, again, we've seen, you know, folks come and go, and that's nothing against them. But, you know, as you know, and your wife knows, it's not easy running a business. And, you know, you talk to small businesses, and, and you know, everybody's got their way of doing things. But, you know, it's not like your normal nine to five where it's like, oh, yep, yeah, my taxes are taken out and all this, you know. There's so many, there's so many little behind the scene things. So, you know, I always encourage people. You know, go to the smaller folks if you can, like a Winter Fab, and, and order some stuff. You know that that means a lot. But um, is there anything $2 else? Goes a long way. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, maybe is there anything else that we didn't cover? You know, you want to give a shout out to your wife or um, any other you know kind of call outs for that you have, Matt? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I just want to say thanks to you know you and Mike uh, for for even starting this podcast and for giving uh, you know what I'll consider smaller guys like me, you know, just a, a platform, just to, just to kind of get our, get our names out there. You know, it's, it's a, just a, a huge honor, but, uh, and obviously I want to say, uh, thanks to my wife, you know, she was, uh, she, she was in the mini truck scene, I guess, uh, in the Ohio area before I even met her, uh, years ago, but, you know, just, you know, couldn't do it without her. Um, she does all the, the, the packaging and shipping, you know, I, I call her, uh, the shipping department, <laughs> Brian, but, right. um, but yeah, she's single handedly the shipping department. And, um, you know, she, she helps me, you know, kind of bring me down to earth once things get a little stressful. And, mm-hmm. um, so, so a huge thanks to her. And, you know, of, of course, you know, customers of ours, you know, no, nothing will be possible without, without all them. And, um, you know, just th- thanks to everybody in the scene, you know, just, um, just you know, just everybody you know, just couldn't do it without you guys. Yeah, it comes down to my mother-in-law would always say it takes a village to raise a child, right? And and mm-hmm. you know, as basic as that sounds, I think like when we think of the truck scene, you know, folks f- tend to maybe forget how vital many folks play a-, a role in this. You know, some are photographers, some are builders, some are show promoters, and then you have the metal guys and the fabricators and, and things like that. So 
to me, mm-hmm. if we look at it as a community and we support each other the best we can, you know, we may not exactly. always need a part, but maybe when you do, you've got Matt's, uh, you know, website, you know, winterfabonline.com programmed in your phone and you go, hey, you know, I heard the guy is a good dude. Let me order some stuff. Or we've seen Matt, we'll see at, at Maggie Valley for many Nats, you know, you, you go by the booth, you'll check out some stuff. Uh, I know the last time I saw you, I bought some wall art uh, for mini trucking, right? The old logo, the new logo, stuff like that. So, you know, again, you know, we tip of the cap to you, man. You know, you guys are out thank there you, hustling and, and keeping it real, realer than real deal Holyfield, man. Yeah, well, I mean, without all these shows, you know, and, and to be honest, like I, I, I was never like an outgoing guy. You know, I, I would never go up to people at shows. But when, uh, I, I believe Slam Fest 20. 20- 13 might have been our first show or no, not 13 20 probably 2014 or 15 in Gainesville. was probably our, our, our yep it, back when it was still up, uh, next to the airport that was my first show setting up as a booth and wow. i'm not gonna lie i was terrified but it it forced me into this position to you know just to put myself out there and shake hands and talk with people and i'm, I'm not gonna lie it kind of helps me that <laughs> You know, typically people come to the booth to, you know, sure. look at stuff. And, you know, that's kind of when you build relationships. And it's, it's just these shows and the, the community, like you said, has just been a, a huge help for, for the growth of the business and just helping me get myself out there and being, you know, more people person. Yes. A hundred percent. But yeah, it's just, a, it's just a, a great, great, group to be part of you know and i I wouldn't trade it for anything yeah and i mentioned i would tell everyone uh we're going to be at southeast mini truck and nats also known as many of you guys know mini nats and we would ask that you go out social media instagram facebook follow mini truck and nats and uh we're going to be out there the 24th no the 22nd through the 24th in maggie valley we'll slap hands with you matt you know we'll, we'll throw one back and and we'll check out the cool stuff you got going on. And again, uh, you know, give a fist bump to your wife. I know she's out there hustling with you guys, running that mm-hmm. small business. And you know, let's go show Matt uh, Winter Winter Fab online some love. And and we appreciate you, Matt. All right, and thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Stay on the rise, my brother. And everyone, we're going to be out for this week. If you're on the way again to Lone Star Throwdown, please don't stop now. You can stream as far back as you can. Listen to those episodes, and uh, make sure if you're on an iPhone, leave a five-star rating. It really helps us out. Matt, that's all we got, brother. Keep on on the rise, man. All right. See you later.